He's in the fastest guy on the special teams, okay? But he has, he's got football speed, and that's what we need. And he's got the vision. I mean, we saw yesterday. I mean, the dude can play, and he's tough, and he's not easy to bring down. So I want him on this special team. I want him on this roster. He better be on this roster because he's already shown me that he needs to be on his team. He was running between the tackles like butter. He was so smooth running. It was incredible to watch a guy who's never played a game of football in his life right after a great game against the Texans to do that. It's just unheard of. Are you listening? Hey. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've already been told yeah. I got to calm down. It's preseason, but I'm developing this huge man crush on Jared Hay as probably you are as well. This is gonna get crazy before the preseason's even over. But you know it's worth getting excited about now. Fam, let me ask you a question. When you were saying your prayers, praying for the 49ers in this past few months, did you look up as you were praying? Did you in your wildest imagination think that your prayer would be answered from down under? The land of where I want to first of all thank all my Aussie friends right now for first of all making your acquaintance and next coming over to my comments wall and putting down some valuable knowledge about Jared Hay helping us to better understand why he's enjoying the success that he is. And also I got an email from another Aussie friend explaining some of the things. Listen, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to share that with you in just a moment, part of it anyway. But first, let us thank Eric Mangini for that defense that we're watching right now. It's not through developing yet, but they look so good against Dallas versus what they looked against the Texans. I, I said, good, 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 good. And the thing is, I want to say right now, during the Harbaugh era, I was satisfied with our defense under Vic Fangio. The only thing is, Vic's his defense was very conservative and kind of mild. They got it done. We were always top five defense. But I was always jealous of those active, exciting, blitzing defenses. And now we got one. Ah. And for that matter, personalities are starting to spring up from that defense already. I took some notes I want to share with you. First of all, we knew Navarro Bowman was going to be outstanding. He comes in for a few plays and he just kicks butt. Smiling, he looked so happy to be back out on the field again. It was delightful to watch. Pick six, Mike Purcell. You tell you right now, that's the second week in a row that he looked like that. That's not a fluke. Mike Purcell may be taking somebody's job. And then there's Nick Moody, who everybody's torn on. Should Nick Moody be starting ahead of Mike Wilhoy? Nick's got my vote. I don't know about you. We can argue about it later. And then there's LJ. I've given LJ a new nickname. LJ, the Hammer McCray. The man is vicious, nasty, and I love him for that. Desmond Bishop. Desmond Bishop looked better than I'd ever seen him look before. Did you see that spin move at the line of scrimmage? Was that awesome or what? Listen, they're going to have to get rid of one inside linebacker. Let it not be Desmond. Okay, we'll wait till next week to see what he looks like. Also, <laughs> this is the thing, all right? Jaquaski type. We saw him during the draft. They showed footage of Jaquaski. Nobody had ever heard of him before. He leveled the guy and had us all up on our feet. <laughs> we got to see that demonstrated against Dallas. I still don't understand how in the world A.J. Jenkins was able to hold on to that ball. Next time, we'll see about that. Marcus Rush. Been watching him ever since training camp. This guy can play. Also, Eli Harold. He gets his first NFL stack thanks to a stunting move accompanied by Quentin Dial. Did you see the little Eli dance? I'm telling you, personalities are springing up from this defense already. Oh, <laughs> it's INTs from Craig Dahl to Dante Johnson. Quentin Patton, 
Quentin Patton did nothing on this day for his chances as wide receiver. In fact, he looked terrible. To be honest, he looked terrible. But on the punt block, how long has Quentin wanted to do a TD blast into the stands? And did you notice Dallas Cowboy fans were giving Quentin love? Do you know that those fans' faces were seen by every Dallas Cowboy fan in the world? I bet they've already been served notice. <laughs> It was hysterical. I loved it. And can we please put to bed why we traded Andy Lee? Bradley Pinion is the real deal and does every bit as good a job as Andy. And it's just the truth. I know Andy's been a long time veteran, but Bradley Pinion is the real deal. And the only people that are still asking questions about that, of course, the media with the, they have holes to fill, and fans who just don't know any better. The star of the day, Jared Hain. <laughs> Did you notice after Hain first of all made that circus catch over the shoulder and came back for over 20 yards, the second time that Jared went into action, there was this eerie silence that fell over Levi Stadium. Every fan in the stadium was quiet and waiting to see what is he gonna do next. I stood up from where I was sitting at home. And I was waiting to see myself. It was one of those moments where, oh my God, here he comes. And sure enough, the man from down under delivered another game. Jared had 260 yards of football in the last two games. That's the biggest impact on the entire team. I got a note from a guy named Richard Smith from Australia I want to share just a little bit with it. I tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a little bit today and a little bit later because I'm going to post this on Rombo Sports Facebook wall. But let me, let me, this will shed a little light on what we've seen so far. He says, so first of all, rugby league is pretty different from the NFL in that it doesn't stop so much. It's 80 minutes a game and you probably get 65 minutes of actual game at least. So when you see Hain doing punt returns and kick returns, he would have probably done 25 to 30 of them in a game in the NRL. The NRL is a national rugby league. Listen, fam, just so we will set ourselves apart from the rest of the ignorant people in America, Jared Kane is from the NRL, the National Rugby League. There's a difference between that and just saying he's a rugby player, all right? Remember that. And the Aussies are gonna love you for it. <laughs> so he goes on to say, so Hayne was always pretty amazing. He was the sort of player that could bust open the game and take it away from his opponents. And he's a big game player. Does that sound like our guy? <laughs> Give you more about that a little bit later next time, but Jared Hain is the man. Hey, Rumbo! Hey! Jimmy D has got to stop scaring 49er fans acting like Jared Hain may not make the 53 man roster. I know, right? He knows good and well. They ain't about to cut the hand brain. He'd better. He looks so good against Dallas, just like he did last week. Mm -hmm. He makes me want to sing. What? Give me some music. <laughs> I come from a land down under, where big is flowing in chunder. Can't you hear, can't you hear me thunder? You better run, you better take cover. Yeah. <laughs> MC! You like that? Yeah! Mr. <laughs> Down Under, Rombo, you know about them, right? Yeah, but it works! We look pretty strong, Rombo. <laughs> hey, hurry up here so we can hit the club. I am so ready to party. <laughs> we go up for Super Bowl 50, bro. Yep. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, let's go to the ladder camp right now. How did you feel about that game versus the Dallas Cowboys? Him see my God. Ooh, fam, it's going to be so good to come in after these games, after we win, because there's nothing but... I can't even take this down. I've been smiling like this all night. I can't even stop it. <laughs> Let me introduce to you, Jacob. Jacob, hey, hello, man. What up? What's up, man? Thanks for having me on. Hey, thank you. Jacob, Jacob where are you, man? I'm in Richmond, California, the East Bay of the Bay Area. All right. Jacob, let's get right down to business, man, because you know what? We have been drug through the mud and everybody said we were gonna s-u-c-k what yeah the defense man last week's defense honestly it left a little bit to be concerned about am i right <laughs> oh yeah 
From sure. last week to this week, the defense seemed to have jumped to another level. Your feelings about that, and name me some people on that defense that was making you crazy, man. I mean, the thing that stood out to me the most yesterday was the front seven. I mean, that D-line was just everywhere. They were swarming the ball. They were giving that big Dallas O-line some pressure. Yes. You know, because that's, that's probably the best O-line in the league right now. I mean, let's admit that. They're huge. Um, and, you know, a, a few people, I mean, even, even though Darnold Dockett only played on third downs, he was doing his thing. He, he was, you know, he was being Darnold Dockett. Uh, Ian Williams did good. And he was, you know, he was creating some pressure. Uh, but Navarro Bowman... You know, to start the game with that that run stuff and play, that was awesome. Just to see him back on the field to me was like so good to have back. He's gonna be the heart and soul of this defense. So mm. he's gonna set the tone for that front seven. So if he can do that, I think you know the players are gonna feed off that. Um, but you know, there was a lot of people that did good yesterday. There's too many to name. But Mike Purcell, I mean, this dude, if he's not if he doesn't make this roster, I mean, at least he need, <laughs> someone's gonna sign him because this dude is beasting it right now i mean he's just penetrating that the o-line all day i mean the whole game he was just right there in front of the qb's face um you know the pick six what can we say about that right <laughs> big dude big dude could run he could run um and he got some moves too but uh yeah i mean overall i think even amat brooks looked good yesterday I mean, he was he was he looked fast um so i mean i think the whole front seven in general did great a lot better than last week mm. you know so yeah, that's, I'm looking forward to seeing more of that next week, especially, you know, the, the third week for the preseason. That's where most starters play. So we'll see next week how that turns out against, you know, Broncos. we got Broncos coming up. So That's true. But I tell you right now, man, Mike Purcell cannot get cut at this point. You realize you, me, and thousands of people will be marching out in front of the Jed York's office. He cannot get cut. He cannot. He's one of those... He's one of about 10 players that cannot be excused under any circumstances at this point. Because you know they're already starting. Man, his jersey is probably available right now. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, he, he's become quite popular, so he, he, he shouldn't get cut. Yeah. yeah. All right, Colin Kaepernick. Now, Kaepernick, we seen Cap yesterday, and yeah, I'll just ask you, what was your opinion about Kaepernick's performance yesterday? And were you concerned? Were you okay with what you see what what happened i mean to me his pocket presence is still lacking that awareness um which worries me because you know i, I noticed our, the right side of our old line struggles still a little bit mm. and i mean there was one particular player yesterday where he got sacked by like when he was swarmed by three cowboys um he should have been able to sense that and bust a corner he's fast enough to outrun most of these guys and gain yards instead of losing 10. Okay. So that worries me right there. I mean, he needs to work on his awareness because from what I've seen so far from our old line, the left side's great. The right side's struggling a little bit. Um, it, there's a, a few players, a couple of our tackles that, you know, they, they're getting bum a lot and they don't give Cap too much time. So if he's going to have that issue this year, he needs to be able to get ready to run. Yeah. So he hasn't been showing me that lately. And when it comes to his throwing, I mean, he was a little inaccurate yesterday. I mean... He really overthrew Anquan Bolden in one of those plays. Mm -hmm. um, that Tory Smith pad was great. You know, wasn't his fault. Um, but overall, I mean, I'm not worried per se. But it's, he still needs to work on some things. So we'll see about that in the next couple weeks. You mean you know what? I want to know what grade did you give him between an A to a D? We're not giving him any. I give, I give. I give C right now. You give a C. <laughs> yeah, just because it's a little early. You know what I mean? I don't want to. I don't want to bash the guy. It's only week two in the preseason, so. You know, we'll see. Jacob, you know what? I really, I, I've got some concerns about him still being a little nervous because Cap is under such pressure. He wants to do well. I'm thinking it could be his nerves because Cap does, in practice, he's been just kicking. And all of a sudden he gets into the game and you, like you say, he seems a little confused. He still seems a little uncertain. His confidence, that Kaepernick swagger, it's got to return that arrogance. He motors on that and we're still yeah. not seeing that. That's, that's my concern. Yeah. Yeah, he looks a little insecure out there. Uh, I'm not sure if it's play calling or if it's just, you know, having new people around him. Um, but like we said, it's, it's still a preseason. So maybe once the regular season starts, he's going to get amped up mm -hmm. and be ready to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping for that. Um, but yeah, we still got a couple more weeks left, so we'll see, you know. Yeah, especially next week. And Quentin Patton, every, the, the, people's, the people's champion. The man that's that everybody <laughs> wants to see succeed. 
Did Quentin do himself any good yesterday? He had a mixed bag of things going on there. But what did, did you see anything that made you change your mind about Quentin Patton? Or how do you feel? I mean, he was great on special teams. I mean, you know, um, but on the receiving side of the ball, I mean, he was three for two, you know, three catches for two yards. And then he had a negative play where he lost like 10 yards. So why are you going, why are you going backwards? You know, you're trying to do too much. You're trying to shake everybody off, but you, you got to run forward, man. Gain some yardage. That's all it's about in football. <sighs> so that was a little disappointing. You know, uh, I remember the commentators were saying that, oh, you know, it was just a mistake. But like, that's a big mistake. Huge. You're, you're trying to win the starting role on, the, on this offense and you're losing it. You're, you're playing a, you're running a negative 10 yard to play. It, <laughs> that doesn't help, man. That does not help you. So he, I haven't seen much from the guy to convince me that he should be the number three receiver. I mean, I'm a DeAndre White fan, sure. so. You know, I'm hoping to see more DeAndre Y plays. We'll see. I mean, yeah, he hasn't really convinced me yet so far. Could be the same disease as Colin Kaepernick gets, has been trying too hard. You know what, Jared? Jared Hain. This is a man that we can talk a whole hour for, but we just got a couple of minutes. Is he going to make this roster? He better. I mean, what else does he have to show the team that he needs to be on this team? I mean, the guy has amazing field vision. His vision to run that ball is amazing. He's in the fastest guy on the special teams, okay? But he, he's got football speed, and that's what we need. And he's got the vision. We saw yesterday. I mean, the dude can play, and he's tough, and he's not easy to bring down. So I want him on the special teams. I want him on this roster. He better be on this roster because he's already shown me that he needs to be on his team. He's a natural. I, you, you know what? It couldn't be said any better than that. I'm telling you right now. And in fact, I'm thinking it's going to be a PR disaster if Jared Hain doesn't make this team anyway. I think he's already got a lock to make it. Those runs from yeah. scrimmage already show that he's got the potential. We're talking about a guy who does not know all the nuances and all the bases of American football just yet. And he's out there making polished pros look foolish. Definitely. I, I, I completely agree with that. He just He's a rook, basically, if you think about it. Uh, but he's got the physicality. He's got the natural gift to be to play this game. So... You know, if they can hone him up, polish him up a little bit, he'll get even better during the regular season. So mm. we'll see, you know. So I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Well, I, can't, I can't wait till next week, man. And just for Jared Hain, just like that hush that fell on the crowd every time they punted the ball to him. People sat there yeah. and said, oh, he's going to You're he ready. Here oh, yeah. he comes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that was awesome. That was, that was good to see. Yeah, we need that. This team needs that. Yeah. Need, I don't know if you noticed, but the energy of the team overall looked alive, compared to, even compared to last year. Even though we were... We were eight and eight. Mm -hmm. Something was off with last year's team. I mean, I don't know if you noticed that, but the energy and the and the the vibe of the organization was just a little bit different. It's, it's changing now. I can see it. New coaching staff, new players. Mm -hmm. It will be okay, man. I think we're going to be fine. We're going to attack that issue in about four or five weeks and get you back in. We're going to talk about that. The way the pendulum swung from last year to this year, but that's a whole other show. All right, Jacob, before you go, good luck to us next week and time for the Lila Holla. Three, okay. two, one. Niners! Let's go, baby, let's go. <laughs> yeah. We continue with more from you introducing Alex. Alex, how are you today, man? I'm doing great. All right, Alex, where are you right now? I'm in northern New Jersey. <laughs> my Niners. Northern New Jersey, and he loves the Niners. Alex. How did that come about? Uh, well, my dad's a Raiders fan. A lot of my family, <laughs> I, I know. A lot of my family is from the West Coast and I just took on the 49ers, you know. I loved back in the day watching early Alex Smith. I remember watching Sean Hill, you know, uh, throwing passes to Isaac Bruce. <laughs> Those were uh, my very early memories of the San Francisco 49ers. All right, I, that, that's... Tell you what, though, tell your dad, forget about it. That little accident that happened last year I tell was not. All the time. I'm telling you, it's not going to happen again. I can't wait to play the Raiders again. <laughs> Let's go to the game. We had Navarro Bowman has made a return, and give him a grade, Alex. Was Bowman on cue? Was he on point? What was your feeling about that? I'm going to give Navarro Bowman a B minus for the short time he played today. Mm -hmm. Navarro Bowman, he has not played a game since a 2013 NFC Championship game when he suffered that horrific leg injury that we, we all remember. Mm -hmm. And seeing him back on the field was a very big encouragement for the rest of the defense to step up and be brave and do what they were going to do. 
He was a little rusty in coverage. He didn't really play in coverage as well as he did those two years ago. But you could see that he was starting to take on the role that Patrick Willis left for him. Yeah. What was on the table, he picked it up and he is going to get it done. He had those nice tackles. He was very aggressive getting at the legs and taking down the ball carrier. And he had a lot of really good play around him from guys like uh, Aaron Lynch and Ahmad Brooks. Tell you right, the step picked up with Bowman's leadership out there. You're so right. You got some things you want to talk about as well today as far as special teams. I want to talk about that special teams unit and uh, Quentin Patton blocking that, uh, that uh, Dallas Cowboys punt and taking that for the touchdown. That was incredible. It's tough for a 6'3 linebacker to get in there and block a punt. But for a 5'10", 5'11 receiver to get in there and also pick it up in the end zone for the touchdown, that's something you just don't see every day. Tell you, uh, and also, the thing is, with that kind of aggression, I think that has a lot to do with the reflection from Mangini's leadership. I've not seen anything like this with the 49ers as far as defense goes in a very long time. So we can believe that has something to do with Eric Mangini. And yeah, you know what? Let's give Eric an applause right now. <laughs> He's doing his thing. Colin Kaepernick. What did Colin Kaepernick leave you with as far as after the game? What was your feeling about Cap's performance? Were you satisfied? Are you worried? Do you think he'll be doing okay going forward? What's your feeling, Alex? I was satisfied with his performance. It obviously wasn't a very strong one. Two for five for not that many yards. I think he only had 30 yards passing. Blaine Gabbard had a better day than him. But remember, <laughs> one drive, you can't make a whole game out of that. But uh, Kaepernick... On that opening possession, uh, he ran that nine-yard read option. Yeah. And when I saw that happen, I knew that Jim Tom Sula had it clicking. He was going to have the big-bodied Kaepernick run downfield, but I loved that Kaepernick slid instead of taking the hit. Yes. And, which maybe a year ago, he probably would have just tried and powered through it, but this time he's trying to stay a little more protected and concerned about his body and slide down after taking that ball for nine yards. And hopefully the Kurt Warner influence has extended all the way to at least being careful as well. I like that. And, you know, also looking at now, we've seen a lot of things from the offense. The line probably did okay. Uh, they can do better on the right side, of course. But Carlos Hyde, they employed the zone block a little bit. What would you think about Carlos? I've been a big Carlos. I'm, personally, I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan. Yeah. He went to Ohio State. No <laughs> love there, but... I really liked watching him in college and seeing him develop into the NFL. He is a bowling ball of a running back. He is hard to bring down, but he's also a very big body. And I feel like if he can learn to continue blocking like that, the Niners are going to have no trouble with that offensive line because they're going to have some extra help up front. Let's go to Jared Hayne, everybody. Uh, something. Jared Hayne is starting to impact the entire league now. It's leaving the 49er community and everybody's talking about him. What was your feeling as soon as you seen him standing back there? Did the hush fall across you as it did in Levi Stadium when it was time to punt again to that incredible Aussie? Well, Jared Hayne, very electrifying, probably the most electrifying player on the roster. When, whenever the Dallas Cowboys went out there to punt, I knew it was going to go to a guy who everybody had their eyes on. He was a very under-the-radar signing. Nobody really thought he was going to have that big of an impact on the team. Not only was he phenomenal in the special teams game, catching that over-the-shoulder punt like it was nothing, but he was running between the tackles like butter. He was so smooth running. It was incredible to watch a guy who's never played a game of football in his life right after a great game against the Texans to do that, it's just unheard of. You agree that the first game was not a fluke? Like some people are trying to say, well, anybody can get lucky on the first time. Anybody's not going to get lucky on the second time. Do you see him improving from here? I mean, we've already seen incredible things. Can Jared actually get better? Jared Hayne can get better with some coaching. This year, I unfortunately believe he's going to be on the practice squad. But if one man, one man goes down on IR, Jared Hayne is going to be the first guy to step up from that practice squad to get a roster spot. There you go. Alex, bring it. Bring it. Keeping it real.
It is a possibility. Jared Hain could find himself on the practice squad. Must do everybody's chagrin, but it is possible. It is. <laughs> By the way, have you ever tasted Vegemite? Oh, I've seen people online trying that stuff. I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> I'm going to give you the three, two, one, and you know what you got to do. Three, two, one. Not it! at him. God, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Jacob, so great to meet you, ma'am. And as for you, I'll see you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. The search is always the same for Ron Bo Sports. You'll find me immediately. Come on over. Let's talk. <laughs> and also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when I come back looking for you. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone.